up guys, Hiki here bringing you a manga review slash reaction this week to One Piece. So yeah, considering that I missed last week's chapter for One Piece, uh, 1054 when it returned after a month break, I think I'm going to go through this chapter and read that actually because it's only two chapters, this and the new one, uh, which is fine I think compared to other mangas where it's like, oh, I missed three chapters, okay, I'm going to just read the first one. But yeah, I'm going to go through the previous chapter very quickly as I can. Uh, and, and try and memorize what happened because I remember a lot happened in, in the previous chapter So yeah guys before I start remember to like and subscribe and yeah uh, One Piece chapter 1054 followed by 1055 uh, Here we go So we get this big awesome uh, panel with the four emperors Okay, we got Buggy, we got Shanks, we got Blackbeard and then we got Luffy the new four emperors basically Which is crazy to think like but here we are uh, we're cutting to the flower capital of Wano. Uh, we ended with, what's his name, Amaki coming into into a Wano. He beat King and Queen, I think, who were recovering. And now he's trying to get to Luffy. This is Green Ball, by the way, I think. His short name is Green Ball. So yeah, conflict stirs amid the festivals. Donjuru, you too. We can't trouble Luffy and the others with this. Follow us, cat, huh? So yeah, we get this big moment where basically Green Ball is confronted by the samurai. So we're not getting uh, Green Ball versus, uh, versus Luffy. We're getting Green Ball versus the samurai. And this chapter is called The Flame Emperor, which refers to Sabo, as we'll, as we'll get into it. The ability to sway others, that really is something you don't see very often. Hmm. You samurai should buzz off while you can. So yeah, we see the flower capital in the background, we see Amaraki there. Every time he's walking, flowers grow up. So, you know, that's a very great ability. Imagine if this... I feel like this is sort of like, it's trying to show the case of, you know, this guy could have come to Wano and helped with bringing, you know, life and flowers back, but instead it's like, oh yeah, I'm here to just kill Luffy. So it kind of makes him look like an, like, a, like an asshole, really. Like, uh... You know, the, the, the admirals could could have used their abilities for good, like, in this situation right now. Instead, this is what they're using their abilities for. And it's like, you kind of get an idea of, like, man, what a waste of your ability, really. So, yeah, we got Raizo, we got Shinobu, is it? Uh, we got uh, Dog Duke, Denjiru, Cat Viper, and Komawatsu there. Uh, so that's six. It's six of them uh, trying to take on this dude. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> look at that. Just as I'm starting, my camera shuts down. Naughty camera. I need to get a new camera, I think. This one is... This one is dying and my throat is going. It's bad. It really hurts. Like I said, I've been sick, guys, and my my throat really is killing me. Like, I've got like freaking need, like itching in my in my ears, and I don't know. I don't know if it's allergies or something, man. But it's it's really annoying me. Uh, a marine or one of Luffy's enemies from overseas. Uh, do any of you have the first clue about the ways of the outside world? The celestial dragons are gods. A country like this, one with no tie to the world government, has no standing. And this dude's slowly turning into like a, a, a tree or something. Don't be mad. It's how the world works. So yeah, he attacks. He makes the first move, and you've got the uh, samurai jumping in, cutting off pieces of him. We see ball. We see Green Ball's abilities. It's like it's like yeah, he's turning into a tree basically. It's like he's plant basically. He's like he's like Hashirama. If Hashirama could turn into a tree and shoot out trees and leaves and, 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 and branches and stuff and turn his fists into branches, it's like that. Flexing forest muscle. The forest forest fruit made me a forest man. My Logia power is nature incarnate, a source of life that rivals the sea. Hmm. We're seeing the people celebrating in the background. It's like it's time you learned a hard truth. Humanity only got this far by enforcing har hierarchies. We've got to put non affiliated nations like yours in their place. That order is what keeps life going. Prejudice breeds stability. This dude is an asshole. Sorry, but everything you're saying is just like wrong. Like it's just, it's just no. It's just that's not that's not the way the world should be. No laws would be broken if you all died here. Rahaha! You can go ahead and try to stop me. I'll butcher thousands of your people if that's what it takes to get Straw Hat Luffy. Look at this guy. What a, what an evil piece of shit. See the camera keeps cutting off. Why why is that happening? Why is that happening? Maybe I need to give it a rest. Been using it for like an hour straight. But yeah, uh, again, this just reinforces the fact of how evil the the admirals and and the uh, and the world government is. Like, Warner couldn't use the help, but instead, it's like, screw it, we'll kill all of you people just to get this one guy. Like, so then we get Yamato coming in. Every word you just said, and she smashes into Green Ball's head. Ugh, makes me sick, man. That hurt. 
that's some hockey you've got there. Uh, it's like these people went through 20 years of tyranny. Now they're finally able to celebrate their liberty. No way am I letting you spoil that. Who are you supposed to be? Yamato Dono. I'm Yamato. Kaido's son. Kaido's... So I'm curious what this means. If, if the world government finds out that Kaido has a child, would they not go out of their way to kill that child? I mean, think, compare it to Big Mom. With Big Mom, it's different. She's got a whole bunch of children, right? So it's like it doesn't even really matter if you kill one or two of them. Like, she's got a whole bunch of kids. Like, it, it, it's never going to make a huge impact. Like, oh yeah, we, we got the child of Big Mom. We're going to kill it. It's like, it doesn't matter. She's got a whole bunch of kids. But uh, uh, I'm wondering if Yamato would sort of be in a similar situation to Ace in that, you know, Roger had that one child and Kaido has that one child. So it'd be like, oh, she's this, she, you know, he, he he's a son, a door of, 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 of this this dangerous emperor. We're going to have to kill them. Like, we have to use all our resources to kill them. Same with Luffy, the son of Dragon. So it's like, uh, I'm wondering if that's, I'm imagining it's going to be the same case. It's like, yeah, they're going to go all out. Like, once everyone finds out that, yeah, Kaido has a child, it's going to be a case of we're going to go all out and try and kill them now, right? But I'm wondering if maybe if this leads to poss if the, 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 the potential of Yamato not joining the Straw Hats now because it becomes a case of, yo, you need to stay in Wano to protect us but also because if you go out, the world government's going to be aiming for your head even more. Like, it's going to put the Straw Hats on an even more dangerous like situation because they're already off the Luffy but now they're going to be off to you even more now if you... Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's not going to happen because I do want Yamato to join the crew so I'm hoping that she does. Uh, and then there's not going to be some excuse like that where it's like, oh yeah, you're going to have to stay in one or to stay protected. I'm hoping that's not the case, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Well said, Yamato. And we see Momo in his dragon form flying in as well. Well said, Yamato. And we have no intention of permitting you to lay a finger on our recovering hero's dragon. Blast breath. So Yamato coming in clutch and nothing. His blast breath does not work. People celebrating. Green Ball looking at this going, huh? Momonosuke going. Momonosuke Sama. you got Yamato and Kawatsu coming in. No matter, you got, you got, yeah, you got, yeah, you got Momo flying in, dragging himself in, and he bites down on Green Ball. I will, I will still drive you from the capital. Be gone. No one will ever bring dread and terror to our people again. I vow that I would not allow it. A pink dragon, how odd. This is the first I've heard of this ability. And then you've got Green Ball just going nuts on Momo, grabbing him with the vines and pulling him, swirling around and basically crushing him. You're in my way. Momo no could. Yamato, stay out of this. What? Uh, and the seas around Wano. So yeah, Momo, we, we basically, Momo's like, I need to handle this myself, okay? I'm, I'm the ruler, I'm the shogun of Wano, I'm its protector. If I can't protect Wano right now, if I can't even protect Luffy and the heroes, etc, etc, what worth am I? So he needs to do this. This is his moment, basically, to like, point out that I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an admiral, with the world government, essentially. So now we're cutting to the seas around Wano, and then we find out that Shanks and his crew are basically there. It's surreal, but he's really considered one now. Let's go, boss. Luffy's become a great pirate. And yeah, we find out it's the Shanks pirates. This takes me back. Last time I was here, we were all giving older son, older son a send-off. Momo and Hayori must be all grown up by now. <clears throat> and we're cutting to the crew. Boss, let's go and see Luffy already. He really is something now. And then we see uh, Yusuf's dad, Yasop. Hang on, I'm not ready to meet Yusuf yet. And we got this dead kids here, kids here too, right? It hasn't been that long since that brat tried to pick a fight with us. And then we see Shanks just like looking at the newspapers, like, look at this. Like, yeah, Monkey D. Luffy, dead or alive, or free. It's Red Hair's ship. Seems like they've got CP9 agents on board. What a pain. What, what's going on? Who cares? Let's go. So I'm thinking we're getting the flashback to when Shanks stole the devil fruit from them. What are, I think that's hoo hoo that, what are they after? It's not like we've got any proper treasure, only some minor devil fruit. What's the big deal? Isn't it just one that makes you robbery? And then we're seeing, we're seeing the aftermath after they've stolen the fruit and we're seeing uh, them at the, at the, at where Luffy is. Luffy celebrating with them and Shanks like, laughing with Luffy as he's a child. The crocodile going for the, going to eat Luffy and Shanks losing his arm and scaring it away. So, yeah, Shanks knew. Shanks knew that this fruit was important, I think. He knew. He knew it was important. He went in, he stole it from them. And whether it was an accident that Luffy ate the fruit or whether he was originally going to go there to give it to Ace, we don't know yet. But uh, we just know that Shanks gave up his arm. He's happy with the way things have gone, it seems. I guess the top officers have a passed with him. 
they really know the straw hat Luffy. We've seen some guys there, Omoro Dayo, Omeo Dayo, what is this? Uh, there's a monkey there, a gorilla. They say he's like a rampaging demon monkey. He's totally out of hand. I'm not planning to have a reunion with Luffy here. What? Don't you remember what's going on in our own backyard? Uh, oh yeah, that Bart guy claimed he was on the Luffy. He put his mark up after burning down our flag. We'd be failing our duties if we just let that slide. So yeah, if you guys remember Bart Follow You, he put he put he, he put Luffy's mark up, if you will. So yeah, well I guess. And then we got that other dude uh, drinking the sake. Hey, Beck, isn't it about time to go and claim it? And Beck's looking at the One Piece. So, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if the translations are off. But the way this looks right now, it makes me think that Shanks knows exactly where the One Piece is and he's going to go and head there now. Uh, I assume Shanks would know where it is because he didn't go with Roger and the others to the island, okay? He stayed behind because Boggy was sick, so he stayed behind to look after him. But surely he, that would mean that he was there in that point of time where he knew exactly where it was located. So he knows. He knows where it is. That means at any point in time he could have gone and gotten the One Piece. But the fact he's saying, like, let's go and claim it now, it makes me think it's a case of we're going to go to Raftel, we're going to go to Laughtail, we're going to go there and we're going to wait there for Luffy to come there now. Because we need Luffy, because Luffy is the key, because they need, they need the Nika Nika fruit. For whatever reason, they need that fruit maybe as a key potentially to unlock the One Piece possibly. And I think that's what's going on. Maybe. I could be wrong. But there is something going on here and I do think Shanks knows where it is. I don't think he's got like a... He's got like a Poneglyph or a Rogue Poneglyph or something that leads to where it is. Uh, I think the Rogue Poneglyph is either going to be on Elbath or it's going to be it's going to be somewhere else. And uh, you know, this, this final arc, the saga is going to still keep on going. But Shanks knows where the One Piece is, and I think he's gonna go there and wait it out. Which leads to also Blackbeard. Does Blackbeard know know where it is? Is it possible? I, I keep thinking maybe that uh, he'll send uh, that uh, that uh, that dude right, who's got the uh, uh, he's got the invisibility fruit ability from that uh, from one of Amoria's men, uh, Absalon. Uh, so I'm wondering if maybe there's going to be a twist where it's going to reveal that this dude has actually been there the whole time but he's because he's been invisible no one's noticed and he's just been hiding himself the whole time and he's been getting the copies of the Ponogryphs and then he just needs to get the final one and he's going to go to Blackbeard and it's going to be the big twist where it's like wait a minute does anyone hear something and it's like boom it's there he's had he's had the copies the whole time and he's going to go to Blackbeard and it's going to become this race between Luffy and Blackbeard to get to Laughtail first and then they run into Shanks and we're going to get this three way or two two way two versus one way battle maybe i don't know like i'm curious to see how this is all going to go but uh, this big revelation right here was just was just insane the first time like and then of course we're cutting to the Navy headquarters, the new world. We can't let the Revolutionary Army go unchecked any longer. Okay, you know, I know that, but we don't have any more Marines to deploy. What the hell? Why does the music play automatically? It's crazy. The only the the only the, the one they've called the one they're calling Flame Emperor Sabo, he's become a champion for much of the world. So Sabo has become sort of a hero now for everyone to march over. Of all the participants of all the participants in the reverie, the one that was killed was a descendant of one of the founding 20 from 800 years ago, Nefertari Cobra. So we get the confirmation that Cobra died. Revolutionary Army's Chief of Staff kills the King of Alabasta. Uh, Sabo assassinates King Cobra. I'm sure this is of great significance for the Revolutionary Army. So yeah, from day one, from the moment the reverie was beginning or we were getting the setup for it, when we saw that Cobra was ill and that he wanted to go to the reverie to talk to the, to the main leaders, to the Gorosei, and then we saw him wander off on that. We knew that he was going to die. This, was, this wasn't this was even up for debate. We knew he was going to die. That, and that if, if anything would happen, it would probably be that Sub will probably assassinate him. That he was going to get framed for assassinating him. Because I'm pretty sure that's what's happened. Sub has been framed for assassinating Cobra. <clears throat> and now they're all blaming him. And they're, they're, given, they're basically going an excuse to basically go after the Revolutionary Army at this point. Vivi most likely is with, with Sabo. Like she's probably been rescued and she was Sabo, that's what I'm guessing. A few hours before that, they, they attacked the homes of the celestial dragons in the Holy Land, destroying a monument of the divine dragon claw and the symbol of the world nobles. It was a blended declaration of war. So in a way, just like how Luffy declared war on the Navy, right, but the, the Marines all those years ago at Ida's Lobby, uh, the Revolutionary Army have just pretty much come in and be like, yo, we're declaring war on you on the on the on, on the on the on the Holy Land and that, etc. etc. 
and then Admirals Ryo Kuguya and Fujitaro took charge of the Navy's defenses. So we know that Greenbaugh and Fujitaro were there and they were fighting with the with the revolutionaries, but in the end they succeeded in freeing their former comrade Bafomalu Kuma Kumo from the Celestial Dragon Slavery and they managed to escape. So the, the revolutionary army escaped with Kuma. They managed to rescue him and escape with him. I'm sure the admirals were restricted because they were fighting the Holy Land, but don't make excuses for them. Okay, you know, it's like, not only was King Cobra assassinated, but around the same time, Prim Princess Vivi somehow went missing. Yeah, Princess Vivi went missing. So she's either been rescued by the other princesses, meaning that she could technically be in Dressrosa, or, or she's going to be in Fishman Island, or she was, or she went with Sabo, and she's going to be with the Revolutionary Army. Um... We don't know what we don't know what exactly what happened, but uh, we, I'm pretty sure that Cobra was was assassinated. This by camera him. turning off is pissing me off now. I'm really getting frustrated. But yeah, Sabo 100% did not kill Cobra, and if he did kill Cobra, it was either through self-defense because of something the Gorosei did to Cobra, or because something happened and Cobra's like, "Yo, you need to kill me." Like it's like, "What? Why?" Like I don't know. There could be a big twist there, but I'm gonna go with that. He's being framed. And uh, Vivi is with him. Like he rescued Vivi, and she's with him right now. Uh, and then we get the we get the we get this new character revealed, a Navy Criminal Affairs Unit Chief Kurama Tessai. Uh, we are still investigating how these cases are connected. I bet Arabasta is in chaos. Their ship hasn't even left the red port. It's hard for anyone to come and go given the circumstances. So Arabasta is in chaos. I think a lot of everyone assumes that uh, the, the Pluto, the weapon, is there in Arabasta. But uh, we got the big reveal, uh, I think, last chapter that no, a Pluto is in Wano. So it's like, oh, crap, what does that mean? And now we get, okay, we got uh, Kizaru here. Does that mean we can close the case on the attempted murder of St. Carlos? So someone tried to kill St. Carlos. Saint Mesgard excused the criminals. In the Holy Land, the God's Knights have jurisdiction to meditate uh, disputes. It's a common situation to say the least. Leave, it, leave, leave them to it. So I don't get what's going on here. Does that mean we can close the case on the attempted murder of Saint Car Charles? So I'm, I'm assuming Saint Charles is that dude, that, that asshole who, who tried to kill H uh, Hachi, if you will, uh, and uh, nearly shot Zoro down and Luffy punched him. I'm assuming that's him. And Saint Mesgard is the dude that tried to calm the situation down and who was actually friends with King Neptune and his wife um, so something's going on there so someone tried to assassinate and rightfully so I think that dude deserves to get killed and then we get Tessai here it seems like most of these incidents are linked to Sabo his flames of rebellion are spreading all over the globe all eight of those rebelling kingdoms were inspired to stage the revolutionary coups while their kings were still returning home so eight kingdoms Eight kingdoms are have done a, a revolution. Interesting. <clears throat> and now we're cut into this big panel of Sabo on an execution stage, I think. But people are screaming, swords in the air. And there's a big picture of Sabo. It's almost as if they're worshipping him like a god. A flame emperor Sabo. With the growth of his legend, you could say his influence is greater than that of the rebellious dragon himself. On top of that, his little brother, Straw Hat Luffy, was dubbed an emperor. The Flame Emperor's influence can even be felt in the pirate world. His younger brother just unended their status quo. Right now, the times are being forced to change. And then there's Arkaido just staring out of the balcony like, I reached the rank of Fleet Admiral during one hell of an error. I don't care what they try to hit us. We'll strike back and return fire on all fronts. Cover and cut. Okay, so yeah, that's the way the chapter ends. Uh, a lot of big reveals here. I'm curious to see how this is all going to develop. But uh, I'm wondering if this whole situation with Sabo is going to lead to a Marine Ford 2.0 similar to what happened with Ace and they're going to try and capture it and execute him. I hope not. And if it does happen, I, uh, I'm assuming the opposite is going to happen where this time around uh, Luffy is going to succeed in saving his brother's life. Uh, plus, Sabo isn't as arrogant as Ace. I'm sorry to say that, but Ace was a very arrogant person. He was a very arrogant, very egotistical person and it got him, it, that attitude of his... Uh, got him killed you know if he if he could have controlled that he would have lived he would have survived but he let words get to him and it cost him his life uh, and it made it made everything that white beard and his crew and the pirates all went for that sacrifice in vain essentially so yeah um, it's one of the reasons i've never really liked ace as a character uh, i've yeah because i think he's just he's a he's a yeah he's a he's not a great character at all. he's not he's a he's a dumbass in my opinion um if I do feel sad, it's it's seeing Luffy's crying face when he realizes that his brother's dead. But I've never liked Ace as a character, so 
and I'm hoping that uh, and so far from what I've seen of Sobo he's been a more intelligent and more smarter character than his brother so hopefully things go right there uh, yeah I'm gonna get a bit of backlash for that aren't I like you hate you hate Ace yeah I do uh, I don't like him he's an idiot uh, so moving on to the next chapter guys uh, come on this is annoying Chapter 1055, A New Age. Okay, this is it. I've not I've not read this chapter yet, so this is going to be the first time me reacting and reading this chapter. So guys, as always, remember to like and subscribe, please. And uh, yeah, we're going to be moving on to 1055. Here we go. What's up, guys? We're back again. So here we go with One Piece Chapter 1055. Oh, man, I'm excited. So we get this cover page, obviously, with the new movie as well coming out red. The, the, one, shakes, the one Shanks Guides. Uh, kind of spread of Luffy there. Yep. And we're moving down. And then we're getting this poster for Red, for film Red. Shanks there, Luffy and Yuta. Uh, Shanks' daughter, apparently. A new age. So, it looks like we're... Ex uh, this, these are panels for the... I don't know what's going on, and so Yuta's song was born. Yeah, I don't really care about this new age theme, so I don't know if this ties into that. I guess uh, we're gonna be curious. I uh, don't get me wrong, I, I like I like the the ones I've seen anyway. Uh, I've liked, so I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, film Red, but I'm not really big on musicals. Uh, so yeah, we're cutting to uh, the Flower Kingdom again. Uh, we see uh, Tomo Chan and Nami that's now and there's uh, what's his name Zeus as well uh, Yeah, the Straw Hats are not getting involved basically they have no idea and then we cut back to the Samurai and Momo and Yamato stop Yamato Why why won't you let me fight you mustn't lay a hand on him and Yeah, green ball just smacking uh, Momo down into the ground like damn he's turned into his big ass tree basically and then we cut to Raizo, Nimpu, scroll jutsu, <laughs> fire release, boom, and then uh, just kidding, oh, oh, he burned, okay, he used fire to burn Green Ball, which, yeah, I assume would work, right, but then it's like, nope, you're just kidding, he's playing around, it doesn't work, fireproof forest, you're up against the Navy Admiral, you think I would be able to guard against such an obvious weakness, yeah, it's kind of true, actually, and then uh, he's going for a spike attack, and he stabs Raizo, oh god, he stabs him, Is what's going on, he stabs him, and he's sucking his life energy out. Oh god. Oh god, he's killing him. Rizo son, he's killing Rizo. And then Kawawatsu comes in and cuts off the vine. Damn you, no matter how much we cut, it just keeps growing back. And uh, Shinobu and, and the cat, Viper and Dog Duke are jumping in. We, we must have some weakness, right? Is weed whacking really all we can do? Dundrew coming in, but he gets grabbed. Uh, and then who, who's this getting grabbed? Uh, I, I can't tell who this is getting Oh, it's Kawawatsu from upside down getting grabbed. And Cat Viper getting grabbed. And now we're cutting uh, to the Flower Capital main castle, and we're in the castle basement where the Poneglyph is, you know, back where we were Robin and Law. Kazuki Sikuhaki Sikuru, even further down. So yeah, there's there's a secret tunnel that leading down, and we're cutting to Law and Robin. This cameraman. We're cutting to Robin and Law walking down with uh, basically Oda's dad. Uh, you did well to sniff us out. You make it sound like I'm a hyena. Oh, look, uh, Law wasn't there last chapter, I think. So yeah, like uh, you did well to sniff us out. You make it sound like I'm a hyena. I simply noticed the two of you weren't with the others. That naturally made me wonder if you were up to something. Be careful where you step. The ground is covered with mold. I never told Orochi or Kaido about this passage, but they were still able to find a pornoglyph in no time because they had a fishman on their crew, the all-star Jack. So because of Jack, they were able to find the Poneglyph, but they weren't able to find the secret entrance, it seems. How would being a fishman help? Robin asks, and they get to, that will be clear when you see it. So they get down, and boom, how far does this go? Ooh, let's see, I would say it goes a few hundred, hundreds of years deep. Years deep? What does that mean, years deep? Where is that dim light coming from? And then there is a glass block window at the end of that crawl space. So Robert goes in and she looks out, you can climb in there and take a peek, we should already be below sea level, so they're below sea level, no fear, uh, but uh, Lord just uses his ability to just teleport in, it's like, no fear, I'm, get, I'm loving these little moments with Robin and Lord, like, it's it's cute, I'm wondering if, if Old is trying to hit or something there, I mean, personally, I've always felt it's like Robin and Frankie, but maybe it's going to be Robin and Lord, 
But yeah, we get we. So basically, they're like they're on they're under the sea level, and there's this like glass panel, and they can look out it, and they can see, and we see this entire town that's submerged in water. So yeah, I can I can see why Jack would be able to find it. Is that Wano underwater? And then you got the grandpa. That is an older Wano from about 800 years ago. It's like what? What do you mean? Exactly as I said. Although as to why it ended up like this, I have no idea. But it's so well preserved. Does that mean this really? This isn't really seawater. It's not seawater. This is what I do know. Long ago, Wano was much larger and located at sea level, on the land around the base of Mount Fuji. Okay, so <coughs> at some point, walls were erected all around, enclosing the island. So walls came up and they closed the island off, and then the sea level rose up. As a result, the rainwater had no place to escape to, and whole towns were eventually submerged and abandoned. So right, yeah. The land further up the mountain has established was established for settlers, and that grew into the country we are familiar with today. So interesting. That's that's kind of crazy. Like, and then you can see sort of like a mark there where they built tunnels to sort of go underneath. The current Wano, precisely. So this is the old Wano. Then we have arrived. This is the load poneglyph. So there's another poneglyph here. Is this? Is this? What is this? What does this mean? The load poneglyph. What does that mean? So this is not the road poneglyph. This is a different poneglyph. It's really here. This is our third. Oh, so this is the road poneglyph. This is the main road poneglyph. Okay, interesting. It's really here. This is our third. We just need one more to travel to Lofttail. We are in a cavern near the foot of Mount Fuji. If you continue to trek a little deeper. So we see, so yeah, we see the map and they've gone all the way down to this big room where the other Poneglyph is located or, and it's located in Old Wano, current location, but we see, but what does he mean? It is said that you would find the sleeping ancient weapon Pluto. I have never seen it myself and I'm unable to show it to you. So Pluto is located here. Retrieving Pluto would require the removal of the walls that surround this nation. Opening the country is quite a literal act. We would lose our greatest defense and set loose one of the ancient weapons. So that's what it means. That's why Momo didn't didn't open the borders because if he opens the borders, it means to collapse the walls. And then what happens to the wall above? Does it still stay above there or does it come crushing down? Like how does that work? Does it stay? Because it wouldn't stay up there because all the because if, if we go up and look at the, yeah, the the, the, the the sea levels are down there, so if the walls come crushing down, and unless they've managed to build one on top of the mountain or around the mountain to have land there, it would all come crushing down as well, wouldn't it, on top of the old one? Like, how does that work? Like, a lot of revelations here. A lot of revelations here. I'm getting goosebumps reading this. Opening the country unleashes Pluto? Robin asks, why would Kozuki Oda want that? Everything I have told you was passed down for generations of Shogetan rule. I cannot speak to what Oda may have learned himself during his voyage in the outside world. So we're coming back to the party. We're seeing, ki we're seeing kids and uh, Law's uh, uh, members partying. There's Beppo, there's, there's, there's uh, Killer. And now we're coming back to, we're coming back to the fight with uh, Green Ball, the flower capital. No man can hope to stand against the forces of nature alone. Get it? If Kaido was still in charge, I wouldn't have come here. I will, I'm sure living under his regime was miserable, but the order he imposed was the deterrent that kept other predators from targeting your country. Just bring me Straw Hat Luffy already. I'll leave you be. I'll leave you be after I take his head. Oh, this guy. He's got everyone wrapped up. Uh, does he have Does he have Yamato? I'm trying to see. Yeah, he's got Yamato wrapped up as well. I think. Let's call Luffy and the gang and show this guy who's boss. And then Yamato's like, "No, that is unacceptable. The same goes for you. Do not touch him." Yamato's like, uh, "After After all that time chained up on on Onigashima, you finally have your chance to be free." It's like, "Huh? That is why I refuse to taint your send off." Ah, he doesn't want to. Okay. Up until now, I have continued to rely on Luffy, Zoro, and the others. But it is imperative to, imper imperative to prove that those of us who are staying here can repel any enemy on our own. Yeah, Dontra is smiling at this. He's like, he's getting it. He's understanding. He's like, yeah, we get you. We need to do this. 
Yeah, because once Luffy and the others leave, who's there to protect you? You only have yourselves to rely on, your own strength and power. You cannot rely on others anymore. It's done. You got rid of Kaido. It's your moment to shine and rise up and take control. If we still have to depend on the people who wish to leave, how can we look any of them, in, any of you in the eyes and say that Wano is safe of us? Momonosuke-kun, and then uh, Mom was like, now be gone, you demon tree. Get out of here. So you're just a spoiled kid. I guess even dragons can be pathetic. I said leave. And then Momo does, he does He does the breath. He does the... <laughs> and he shoots out the beam, and it pierces through Green Ball, and it actually hurts him. It actually hurts him. And it's like, wow, it actually came out. And like, Momonosuke-sama, then Drew's like, everyone gets released. Everyone's falling. Momonosuke-sama, that was... It was a spitting image of Kaido's, yeah, it was similar to Kaido's, and he's like, Mo was like, be gone, be gone, and he's doing it again, be gone, hang on, you crazy bastard, and he shoots off another beam into the dude's face, good, amazing, he's managing to control his dragon form, but his aim still leaves much to be desired, yeah, he needs to, he needs to learn how to properly aim, and Green Bull just gets, yeah, he's on the ground, burning up, like, whoa, like, he's burning up. And, and the flowers, the flowers that usually sprite from him, they're burning up and they're dying. What a pain. Easy now. Seriously, is he trying to burn down the whole town? Like, oh, the body died. The main body that we use in died, but he sprouts. Sorry, it's not that. So there's a leaf that sprouts from the ground. And then Green Ball ends up emerging from it. So, yeah, he just sort of left his current body and he sprouts up from a new one, basically. That's a, that's a pretty cool ability to have. You can, like, resurrect yourself so many times. Since you're so hell-bent on playing hardball, have it your way. I'll, I'll skewer you and your wannabe Kaido routine from mouth to tail. Oh, God. And then now we're cutting uh, to the outside of one or to the sea. And we're seeing these black, these black lightning strikes, whatever, emerging. Not from the sky, but from, like, the outside. And Green Ball, he goes back to his normal human form as, as, the, as those spikes, as it hits him. It's like, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Like, that Conqueror's, that's Conqueror's Hockey. That Conqueror's Hockey, who the hell? The red hair Pirates, you're here too. And he gets scared, he's shitting himself. And now we're cutting back to the Shanks Pirates. Boss, don't just news your hockey with a warning. All the newbies are forming at the mouth. I won't call you, I won't call you Marines cowardly or, underhand, or, or underhanded for this, but... Wouldn't you agree it's bad form to go after these worn out saplings when they've exhausted from making pirate history? So I don't know if this... And then we're cutting to Shanks, we're seeing Shanks trying to stop Luffy from cutting himself when he cut himself with a knife. We're cutting to uh, Oda and I think Momonosuke when he hit him on the head maybe, I don't know what's going on here. And then we're cutting to Hiwari, I think when she was born, her mother. And Shanks is getting pissed off. Does the new age frighten you that much? Oh, oh, he's angry. And then Green Ball's like, I get it already. It's not like I want to pick a fight with you guys. Not today anyway. And Green Ball, he runs away. He's leaving. And Momonosuke's crying. He's like, yo, we did it. And then we're cutting to the, we're cutting to the, we're cutting to the other straw ads. We're cutting to Frankie, Usopp, Chopper, and Brook just playing and playing with the others. There's, there's Hi Hiori and the little girl. Yachu's daughter, and then we're cutting to Luffy, Zoro, Chibay, and Sanji on a cliff, and they're like, like, he's gone, she, 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 I guess we don't need to lend a hand after all, check Momo out, indeed, and that hockey just now was really something too, yeah, who was that, so, so these guys were actually there, they sensed Green Ball having arrived that, that whole time, and they went there, and they stood there, and they were watching the whole fight, waiting to see if they should come in and lend a hand, and yeah, they didn't like they saw the whole fight like from above. That's great. It's like it's like yo, Momo's doing his thing. Okay, he doesn't need us. We're good. But surely they realize it was it was the hockey that stopped them. It's like yeah, who was that? Like Jibei's asking that question like indeed, and that uh, was something too. Yeah, who was that? So was like, and Luffy's like a familiar face just popped into my head. I think I think Luffy surely I think Luffy realizes where it might have been, like as he's smiling saying that. And then we, we, in the last panel we see of, is of Shank's ship just leaving, a ship drifting in the vast ocean. So yeah, uh, what a chapter, what a chapter, 1055 man, so many revelations and reveals and setups, like, oh! Okay, so before this camera burns out, um, <laughs> yeah, this chapter man, so... 
So, but, uh, technically speaking, uh, Mom Momo did hurt. He did hurt Green Ball. He showed that he could hurt this dude with his with his breath. He managed to control his power. Maybe not his aim, but he did show that he can he can burn this dude up. Right, uh, he can go toe to toe with him. But it was thanks to Shanks in the end that made Green Ball leave. And hopefully, it also means that it means that other people won't attempt to come here. Like the Marines in general won't attempt to come to Warner now because it's like, yo, Shanks was here. He could have he could have destroyed us if he wanted, but he gave us a warning. We're out of here. We're out of here. Okay, whatever. Cool. And obviously, we get the big reveal that Luffy was there as well. It's like, yeah, he was watching this. He could have come in at any time. The fact that him, Zora, Sanji, Jibei, they all sensed Green Ball arrive. And they all were there, ready to help in, to step in if needed. But they were like, yo, we're going to let Momo do his thing, unless it gets really, really bad. Uh, and then, of course, uh, also the revelation that Momo was doing this for Yamato as well, and that, yo, I don't want to taint you. You're leaving. Like, I want you to leave happy and calm and reassured that when you leave, Wano is going to be protected by us. So, yeah, I think this confirms even more that Yamato is going to be joining the Straw Hat crew. Uh, yeah, Shanks just getting very pissed off, remembering the kids, the children, uh, basically the new age, if you will. So I do think, I do think he's that kind of guy. It's like, yo, like I keep saying that Shanks is going to be revealed to be a villain, maybe, but I'm starting to wonder that it's not going to be that. It's going to be something else. Uh, but the fact that he's got this sort of, he's throwing his all into this new age, basically, like he's, like you know, it's his way of saying it's these, it's these kids' generation. It's their time, and you're trying to destroy that. It's like, yeah, it makes me think that he's gonna be there to help Luffy out. He wants to. There will probably be some manipulation there going on that will be that we will discover. I think, but I think it'll be all for the greater good. I hope so. You know, fingers crossed. It isn't. It isn't too bad, right? And then, uh, yeah, man. Uh, just yeah, just a very, very good bloody chapter. And and Green Bull did prove himself to be a very powerful admiral in just these two chapters. It reminds me very much of uh, when we first witnessed uh, uh, Akujin when we when we first got uh, uh, Akujin coming in, and and he just he destroyed the Straw Hats. He destroyed Luffy, and they had to escape. It sort of reminds me of that uh, of that moment really with with Green Bull. But in this case, in the end, Green Bull was the one forced to escape and run away. But uh, I'm very curious when we finally get our fights with the Admirals, how they're going to take them out. Because we still haven't gotten that moment with, with, with the Straw Hats taking on an Admiral and winning. Like, we still need that moment. We still need that fight. And it's going to be very interesting to see who is going to fight who. Like, like are the Straw Hats going to fight the Admirals? Are they not going to fight the Admirals? Are we going to get, like, this fight with Fujitoro, with Green Ball, with Kizaru, with Akainu, with Akajin? I mean, Akajin is with, with, with Blackbeard and that. But is he undercover? Is he not undercover? What's going on there? Like, uh... I'm very curious to see how this is all going to unfold, but yeah, uh, we're still in the Wano arc, it's still not over, we still have a few chapters, I think, for Wano to go. Uh, I'm very curious what Pluto is, like, it's supposed to be a battleship, right, so I'm very curious to see what Pluto looks like, but from the way they're describing it, and the way they're saying that, oh, the borders need to be destroyed, for, it makes me think that Pluto is underground, it, it's under the old Wano, and once the borders go down and they go down to wherever it is and activate it, it's just going to come rising out of Wano, basically. Like, so I'm thinking it's like this very, very, very big giant kind of contraption, basically. Like, because it is supposed to be a giant battleship, right? So, and what's going to activate that battleship? That's another thing you have to wonder, like, what's the key to it? But yeah, uh, an amazing chapter. Very amazing chapter. Can't wait to see what happens next. Can't wait for next week because apparently there's no break. Uh, uh, it doesn't say no break here. Hmm. I mean, I'm just going from what the league said, no break, but, uh, you know, free for free, right? <coughs> uh, yeah, can't wait, can't, can't wait, it's getting, it's getting surreal at this point, it's getting very surreal, but yeah, that's my review and reaction to One Piece, chapter 10, 54, and 55, I hope you guys liked it, as always guys, remember to like and subscribe, I'm sorry for the lateness, again, if I'm sick, I can't really do anything about it, I do try, but uh, yeah, in this case, I did force myself to try and do these reviews this week, and yeah guys, I hope you liked it, and yeah, uh, I shall see you when I shall see you, hopefully next week guys, take care and bye. Technically, it's my birthday next week, so I'm actually going to be busy. So you might not get a chapter, actually, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Take care. Bye, guys. Take care and bye.